So this is going to be the first time that I've ever seen this scene. This was one specifically that I really didn't want to once we did it. And when we first talked about doing this, in the very, very beginning, I knew this scene was going to come. And it was, I told you, I was like, give me a heads up yeah. <laughs> when this day comes because it's not going to be a good one. Well, the, the, the thing with this scene, it's a super difficult scene to shoot. The first time we shot it, we, we did like at least 15 takes or something crazy like that. And then we thought we had it in the can and... Well, I thought. I, I... Well, no, we all thought. We thought we, 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 can, we came back to work and we started putting it in. And the, for me, there was just something that was... I felt like we could convey the same amount of emotion with less. Yeah. And it was a hard thing to tell Troy because everybody put so much into it. And it's like, we got to do it again. Well, I remember we that We got to come back to this. When you came back and you told me that we have to do this again, you'd obviously, you know, you'll, you'll see why what we're talking about. But this is the defining moment for Joel. It, this is where he draws that line in the sand where he has few moral lines left to cross. I'm so amazed with how well Hannah did. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was difficult to watch just, just on the mocap stage. And we actually had people, after a few takes, leave the set. It was, they were like, I can't watch this anymore, and they just took off. But from a story standpoint, it's so important to show just what the violence does and how it, like, rips apart this this family. Well, and a lot, a lot, especially a lot of times in video games, you see blatant violence, but when you personify it and you put it on a face, especially that young face, and you see the, the devastation that just one, one life lost can do. And it's just, I mean, this was such a hard day. Such a yeah. hard day for both of us. I mean, it was exhausting for her. It was exhausting for me. Um, so the op opening credits, uh, the thing with the opening, initially we didn't want to do opening credits, we didn't even have the idea for this, uh, but the jump felt too sudden to go from Sarah dying to then 20 years later. And making up. We found that when people watch it in succession, they're not paying attention when we start introducing Tess in the world because they're still recovering from Sarah dying. So we're like, okay, well, let's have this opening sequence that can kind of help bridge the gap. And just had the idea of just seeing this time-lapse video of fungus growing, because uh, so much of the disease and the outbreak is based on this cordycept fungus that spread through spores. Uh, so we contacted a group at Sony San Diego who did this whole opening sequence for us, and they actually got these fungus fungal kits where they grew fungus like in their bathrooms and filmed this over like days to produce this thing. So everything you're seeing is actually, it's, it's real, it's not CG, it's not, it's all, it's all organic. Yeah, it's all, except for the spores at the end, which are CG, everything is, is real. <laughs> this whole journey is like a dreamlike state and you constantly see people waking up. And you see this multiple chime with Joel and it's as if he's like remembering the past, he's yeah. always having these bad dreams um, throughout the game. That was always something that we had to keep in mind when we did this scene, because we shot this before. We shot Sarah dying scene, so it's kind of like we knew that those were going to be in, in, in one way or another kind of butted yeah. up against each other. But this is such a great thing. Again, this was in the audition thing that we did when we were trying to find Tess. And when Annie walked in, it was just like she, she walked in as Tess. We saw a lot yeah. of different people for yeah. that. And this was just such a great, because the relationship you see from going from Sarah and Joel to now Joel and Tess, mm -hmm. it's no, just, I don't, I don't know, you, you see everything, like the house that he was in before was nicer. He looked nicer, and it's not just the years have passed, but those years that have passed have This been also kind. gets into something interesting for me as a writer, which is you have a certain notion of characters or how you want the structure to be, and then once it's interpreted through actors like Troy, it changes. Uh, like I've always imagined this as, as Joel doesn't really care for Tess. He has like he's completely shut down, and Troy treated it differently, which is I think he really cares for Tess, and uh, even though he might not show it, and we just kind of embrace that. And you kind of see that later when, when uh, Tess gets infected. Uh, that wasn't how the scene was originally envisioned, that Joel has such a, a reaction, but it became a lot more interesting to own that. Well, and also how much this relationship changed over, I mean, time and different writing iterations and just conversations that we had about this, even, you know, within just in the last month or so, we've had conversations about this. It's like, what is their relationship? Because we never define it. And I think anybody else would have put it on the nose, their lovers or, or whatever. There was one note that you gave, it's like, let's, for one specific take, and said, let's, let's just assume that there was a fight last night over what, we don't know. This is that moment afterwards. So it was like this awkward tension between the two of us. 
but there's no like loving embrace. There's no kiss that Joel and Tess have. It's just such an interesting relationship. And the, the challenge was to try to, how much can we convey just through nonverbal interaction? Right. 